Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are going to make this gorgeous Speedy Granny Ruth rainbow scarf. You're going to love this pattern so much. It's a super simple one row repeat and no ends to sew in. Plus, you don't have to crochet super long rows because the tassels add about 12 inches of length. It's a great stash buster and looks fantastic in any color combination. It also has no holes, so it makes a really great gift for all the friends in your life that don't like holes in their crochet. And if you'd like to follow along with the written pattern, it's available over on my website, secretyarnery.com. And you don't have to worry about being able to read a pattern. All of my patterns are written in plain English, just like I'm speaking in this video. The finished size of my scarf is 62 inches long by 7 inches wide. My tassels are approximately 6 inches long, so the finished size with tassels, 74 inches or 187 centimeters. Centimeters. To make your Speedy Granny Ruth rainbow scarf, you will need five different colors of yarn and also a neutral. You will need an 8mm crochet hook for your starting chain, a 7mm crochet hook for your scarf, eight stitch markers, a pair of scissors, and absolutely no needle. <laughs> so let's get started. the Speedy Granny Ruth scarf, you will need your yarn and your stitch markers and your larger hook. So I'll be using an 8mm crochet hook for the chain. So you want to start by leaving a long enough tail that you can use for your tassels. So maybe about 7 inches and make a slip knot any which way you normally do. Shrink that down and pop it onto your hook. So we're going to chain in sets of 20. So chain 20. One, two, three, 19, and 20. You'll see your pretty little V's, so just kind of hold your thumb softly on the top of those V's and roll that chain to the side. And you will see these bumps along the back, these little camel bumps. These are your back loops. And we want to put one stitch marker into that back loop that's right underneath our working yarn, this loop right here. So slide a stitch marker into that back loop of the chain you just made, your 20th chain, and chain 20 more. One, two, three, 19, and 20. Now do the same thing, your thumb gently on the top of those pretty V's, and just roll it to the side. Look for that back loop or the camel bump right underneath your working yarn right here, and slide in a stitch marker. And you want to keep going, making your sets of 20 and popping in a stitch marker until all eight of your stitch markers are used. And if you'd like to make your scarf a different length, you can make yours any multiple of four. So pause the video and I'll meet you back when you've used up all your stitch markers. When you have used up all of your stitch markers or chained 160, take that larger hook out, go back to your smaller hook and chain three. One, two, and three. And we also want to be working into our back loops. So you see your pretty little V's. We want our V's facing up. Just rest your thumb on the top of those V's softly and turn it to the side. And now you will see these loops at the back or these camel bumps. The first one is right underneath the working yarn. It's hiding right underneath the working yarn. So there is one, two, three. Number four is right where our stitch marker is. So we're just going to go underneath that one back loop. So wrap your yarn and into the fourth chain from your hook, the fourth back loop. Just go in and make one double crochet. And you can take that stitch marker out if it's in your way. And into the next back loop right here, this next stitch, the next chain, one double crochet. Chain one, skip one. So we're going to skip the next back loop. We're skipping this one. We're going to go into the second, into the second back loop. We're going to make one double crochet. So for this row, we're doing sets of three double crochets, chain one, skip one. So we're going to go into the next two back loops. So we're going to make a double crochet here 
and another double crochet here. So sets of three. So into the next chain, the next back loop, one double crochet. And into the next back loop as well, one double crochet. So there is our set of three double crochets. Now we're gonna chain one and skip one and do another set of three. So if you roll that chain to its side, our next back loop is right here. We're gonna skip that one. And we're gonna work in to the second, the third, and the fourth. One double crochet into each of those chains. So skip one and working into the second, one double crochet into the next one double crochet and into the next one double crochet. So we're going to repeat that all the way along this row. So chain one, skip one, and one double crochet into each of the next three chains. So there's our first double crochet. our second double crochet, and our third double crochet. So you can pause the video and keep doing that all the way along your chain, and I'll meet you when you get closer to the end. At the end of your chain, you'll have two chains left. So that is gonna be our chain one, skip one. So chain one, skip one, one double crochet into the last chain but we don't want to finish it. We want to leave those last two loops on your hook because we're going to change colors now. So cut a long tail as long as you want your tassels to be or even a little bit longer and get your next color of yarn. Now make a loop and measure it so your tail is about the same length as your other tails and put that loop onto your hook. Hold those tails down, give it a pinch, and drag that new loop through. So we're gonna finish our double crochet with our new color of yarn. And now drop your tail, just holding it along the back of your work, and chain three. One, two, and three. So turn your work, just slide your hand under your working yarn, and turn your work. You can take out those stitch markers now. So now wrap your yarn, and we're gonna do a drop stitch, a drop double crochet. So instead of going in to our stitch up here, we are gonna be going in to that back loop, the same back loop we worked into before, right down here. So we're gonna work into our chain for this row. So wrap your yarn and slide that back loop onto your hook. Underneath everything, like that, and one double crochet. One double crochet into the next stitch, which is right here. One double crochet. Chain one, skip one. So we're skipping this middle double crochet for the whole pattern. Wrap your yarn into the stitch right before the space. One double crochet. Into that space, we're gonna be working into that chain at the very bottom. Wrap your yarn and into that chain, that back loop, just sliding it onto your hook and putting your hook all the way through, just like this, and one double crochet. One double crochet into the next stitch, which is right there. And chain one, skip one. We're gonna skip that center double crochet and work into the next. So we're working into the double crochet right before the space. One double crochet. And we're gonna work into the space. We're gonna go into this back loop down below. Does our hook all the way through? So all of that will be on the top part of our hook. So wrap your yarn and a drop a double crochet into that chain underneath the space. And one double crochet into the stitch right after the space. So it looks like this. And we're gonna keep going, skipping over that middle double crochet. So chain one, skip one. 
and then double crochet into the stitch before the space, drop double crochet into the chain underneath the space, and double crochet into the stitch right after the space. So wrap your yarn, double crochet into the stitch before the space, wrap your yarn, double crochet into the chain underneath the space, and double crochet into the stitch right after the space. So you can pause the video and keep working along this row and I'll meet you when we get to the end. After your last set of three, you will have this little circle left, this little lump. So our chains count as double crochets in this pattern. So this is our last set of three, one, two, and three. We're gonna skip the center double crochet and use the top of the chain three as our third double crochet. So at the end of the row, chain one, skip one, and into the top of our chain three, two strands of that chain on the top of our hook, one double crochet. But we're not gonna finish it. So start your double crochet, wrap and take off two, leave those last two loops on your hook. Now go ahead and cut your yarn, leaving a long tail for your tassels. Make a loop of yarn, leaving the same length of tail. Slip it onto your hook, and I know we're not changing colors, but I do want these tassels started. So that's why I have cut my yarn and rejoining. So finish with your new yarn. Hold it all down at the back of your work, and chain three. One, two, and three. Turn your work, and this is what we're gonna be doing for the entire scarf, the whole pattern. So we're always going to start with a chain three and turn, a drop double crochet into this stitch. So now we're going to be working right into this stitch right here. So wrap your yarn, two strands of that stitch on the top of your hook, one drop double crochet, and into the next stitch, one double crochet. Chain one, Skip one, always skipping that drop double crochet in the row below, and into the first double crochet before the space, one double crochet. Wrap your yarn, one double crochet into the stitch below the space. It's gonna be doing our drop double crochet down here. There is our drop double crochet and our last double crochet into the first stitch after the space. Just like that. So chain one, skip one, wrap your yarn into the second stitch or that first stitch before the space, one double crochet. Wrap your yarn, one double crochet into the stitch below the space, down here. That's our drop double crochet and one double crochet into the next stitch. So you can pause the video and keep working along and I'll meet you when you get to the end of your row. To finish your row, chain one, skip one. So we're skipping that last double crochet and we're gonna work in to the top of that chain three, just right there. So one double crochet into the top of the chain three to finish, but we're gonna leave that stitch on our hook. So we're gonna leave those last two loops on our crochet hook. Measure out your tail. So if you want long tassels, leave longer tails. If you want short tassels, leave a shorter tail. And now pause the video and keep crocheting one row of the white and two rows of your color, one row of white, two rows of your color, all the way up until you have finished your five colors. After you have finished the second row of your last color, we're gonna do our very last row a little bit different and leave the same long tail you always have been and just finish that stitch with your neutral color yarn. Drop your tail and pinch them down at the back of your work and chain three. One, two, and three. Turn your work into the stitch at the bottom of the space, one drop double crochet. And now into the next three stitches, one double crochet into each. 
one, two, and three. Into the stitch below the space, one drop double crochet. And now one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. So now pause the video and keep working along. One drop double crochet into the stitch below the space and one double crochet into each stitch until you get to the next space. So we're doing the exact same thing as the rows below except we're not chaining and skipping anything. Everything is a double crochet or a drop double crochet. So pause the video and keep working along, doing a double crochet into each stitch and a drop double crochet into the stitch below each space all the way along until you reach the end of your row. At the end of your row, do your last double crochet into your chain and chain one to secure your yarn. Cut your tail, leaving it the same length as your other tails or how long you want your tassels to be. Pull your hook up and your yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now, no sewing in your ends. We are ready to make tassels. So now go ahead and take your pairs of yarn where we changed colors and give those a little knot. Just one little school knot all the way along, just to secure our tails, just like that. And now go ahead and get your yarn and get a book that is about the length that you want your tassels to be and preferably a hard cover so it has this little groove along the top. That is a great place to slide your scissors under. So now grab your yarn and you want six wraps, so that is one wrap, two wraps, and you want six of these per tassel. And now you can just take your scissors and slide them underneath that little space in your hardcover book. And there are your tassels. So now go ahead and do this for each of your five colors. We're going to alternate our tassels, white color, white color, white color, all the way along. So starting and ending with white. So get your six strands of white yarn, as even as you can, and just hold it open with your thumb. Grab a smaller crochet hook, I'm using a four and a half, and slide it into this very first spot right on the edge. And you want to make sure you have two or three strands of yarn on the top of your hook. Get those loops on your hook, pull them a bit tight so they're as small as they can be, you have some tension, and pull it through that stitch. Just like that. And make a big loop about four centimeters or an inch and a half. Grab those tails and bring it through, so like a big slip stitch with all of that yarn. And snug it down. And then just give every strand a little bit of a pull just to make sure you don't have any loops waiting on this side. So now next is going to go right into the center of this colored stripe. So I'm just going to pop my hook in right here. I want to make sure I have two strands on the top of my hook and I want to get my blue yarn ready. So six strands and again just keep it on your thumb. Slide it onto your hook. Pull it down. You want these to be as small as they can be on your hook so it'll be easier to get it through that chain or that stitch. And now bring them through for one or two inches. And you can either use your hook or your fingers. Just slide your fingers in or your hook and bring those tails through. So one nice little slip stitch. If you have your other tails nearby, you can poke those through also that match your tassel. Like that. And snug it down. Again, grab your tails individually just to make sure they're not, you don't have any super loose ones. You don't have to pull them like really, really, really hard, but you just want to make sure they're not gaping or you don't have a big loop of yarn. So there's two. Next is going to be white. And we're just going to go into that center stitch. Lots of yarn on the top of our hook. 
Get that tail out of our way. Loops of yarn on your hook and bring it through. Bring it up and you can just slip stitch with all that yarn to join or you can use your fingers to slip stitch if you don't want to use your hook. Go ahead and snug that down. You can use a smaller hook now, just insert it back down into that um, slip knot you just made. Grab your tail and bring it through. Next is going to be green, then white, yellow, white, orange, white, pink, and we'll end with white. So you can just pause the video and keep working along, putting your six strands of yarn into the appropriate spot, making sure you have two or three strands of the stitch of your scarf on the top of your hook, and I'll meet you when you have all your tassels joined. Now to trim your tassels, you can use some masking tape and just line up where your shortest ones are, keeping it parallel to your scarf, and just kind of tape those down to hold them. That little guy should be in there too. And then one more piece, a little higher up, just at the tip of those short ones, like this guy right there, these ones over here. And then just to check, you can use a measuring tape and just measure that all your tassels are about the same length. Now taking a larger pair of scissors, sharp ones if you have, and just slide in between the tape right along your table. Just like that. And you can just slide your scissors again just to see if you've forgotten any. Nope, came through great. So now we can take off our lower masking tape with our ends on it. Isn't that cute? And our top tape. And there are our cute trimmed tassels. And most of your ends didn't make a mess. So go ahead and do that on the other side and now you are finished. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I did. I would love to see how yours turned out. You can find me on social media. All of those links are in the description box down below. And if you haven't joined or subscribed to this channel, go ahead and click those buttons under this video right now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and we'll see you in the next video. Stay hooked.